what's going on guys it's been stupid busy this week but uh trying to squeeze in a bunch of things was out on some fescue uh today and yesterday and i went to this uh field day that uh pure seed east put on for uh, southern seeds uh kevin sharp invited us out it was a good time jay wyrick and chris elms were there it was still a good time though anyway i got a little footage and some of the things we've been seeing in the grass so stay tuned Again, it's always a treat to go out to uh, Dr. Frazier's and see what they're working on and what's next and what's promising. Some fantastic stuff in some top secret zoysia. Uh, the Bermuda grasses is always, blue grasses, bent grasses, lots of things going on with fescue. The seashore paspalum, the paspalum vaginatatum, whatever it's called. Anyway, it was, it was really cool. And thank you to uh, Dr. Frazier and the folks at Pure Seed and Kevin for having us out there learned a lot as always and it's just a real treat to see all that and know all that goes into making these uh top-notch varieties for us this is a fescue lawn i inherited from one of my buddies he doesn't want to spray fescue anymore uh first time here hadn't had a fungicide on it yet either and it's uh almost august it's brown patch damage in it that's some uh, dove weed going on in there. That's a brown patch. Uh, you can get out on this with a pretty fair rate of uh, propiconazole and azoxystrobin and spray, spot spray some of these uh, weed issues with uh, surge. There's you some classic brown patch damage. Usually you'll see a little black right where it leads into the brown. I think it's washed off. Changing gears a little bit now. Uh, spraying fungicides on fescue. Went through spot spraying the weeds. Some Virginia buttonweed. I've got uh, one ounce per gallon of change up in the uh, clothes on here. Spraying these guys out. Something interesting right there. Some more of it. Like around here, this is bull pospolum. So I'm told. Huh. Let's change up and that. Won't do a damn thing to it. Pilex or more economical ways to glyphosate that out at overseeding time. Oh, just stepping home. 
方觉得。Or we used a spot spray on this one. Turf is holding up pretty decent being that it's nearly August here. This fungicide that I just put on it's gonna be the money shot to see if we can get through. Here's a I thought I saw one little Virginia buttonweed. Change up is pretty good on that. The Clorox appear in it tends to get them. You can hear me over that hedge trimmer. That's Kalinga. Change up's not gonna do anything to that. You need to dismiss or something along those lines. Just in the back there, you can still hear the hedge trimmers going. Uh, this one dries out every year a little bit on these corners. But I mean, other than that, for this time of year, be solid. And that's the one I was just in. I'm looking at this one, she's got a couple of sedge plants, a bunch of them in the uh, juniper over there. I got the fungicide down on this one, turf's doing okay. Just a couple of weeds here and there, my spot spray. Uh, the, the, what I got loaded up is no good for the sedges. I'm not too worried about those. They stay down in the canopy for the most part in between mows. A couple little plants right there, not worth spraying fungicide down on this one yesterday and ran out of daylight and back spot spraying the weeds. All this is the same neighborhood. It's a little oxalis there. Let's see how this does on that. Some little sapling kind of stuff coming up in here too. Sedges. So we're not really going after sedges with this. There's some chamber bitter. Treated this one last night. You got fescue in the back. This is Bermuda. Um, combination of things here. We got, uh, I think we've got a little bit of dollar spot in it, plus some uneven ground and lower mowing. But uh, definitely think I saw a little dollar spot activity in it. So, what I did with this thing is I went ahead and sprayed it with uh, the fungicide as a, like a azoxystrobin propiconazole and thionate methyl combination and ran about a two pounds of uh, 4600 per thousand on it. She ought to come out of this thing screaming. Another one got the fungicide sprayed on it. Now I'm on uh, spot spray weed patrol. Got some stuff going on here and some Bermuda grass encroaching. Bermuda grass. Got this one sprayed too. He's a uh, He's starting to see a little effects. A little bit of this is heat stress too, but it, it, I've only got one fun. Well, this will be the second fungicide round down on this one this year. I just started with this one, but he looks a lot better than he did. But he's got some crab grass encroaching out here, and some uh, creeping Charlie and some clover. I, I just sprayed that, so and the crab grass got a little. In Clorac yesterday, so we'll see how that goes. While I'm walking by it in between all the fescue yards, this is a zoysia yard I treat. And I mow this one too. He's do a mow. Let's see if we see any. Got the backpack, see if I see any weeds in this. Let's July 25th, this is the first one I've seen uh, in fescue. It's a gray leaf spot. This is, uh, I think this is about 18 to 20 days after a uh, headway application. So we can, I'm mowing today actually, <clears throat> but I'm probably going to get back over here this afternoon and do a uh, headway and thiothanate methyl application on it. You 
see the lesions are distinctively different with gray leaf spot than they are uh, brown patch. This fescue is looking pretty strong for almost August. Right in here is where I showed you that little uh, gray leaf spot, lesion spot. And there's another one right in there. But I don't have a sprayer with me right now. I'm out mowing, but I'm gonna come back later this afternoon and spray that. My bent grass uh, lawn here, it, it's doing okay. Uh, I, I beat it up pretty bad trying to spray the Creeping Charlie out of it. It was, it was gone for a while, but it seems to be making a comeback and the grass was beat up and still remains a little beat up, but the stupid ground ivy's coming back out. I've tried uh, Shore Power, which really beat up the grass spot spraying and uh, uh, change up and that, at a low rate, that even beat it up and it kept the creeping Charlie out for a little while, but it came back. So I fertilized it and took it off growth regulator, trying to grow the damage out. It's, it's looking a little better, still got some, some spottage, but uh, maybe in a week or so I can get their growth regulator back on if they give up on the ground. I might try carpentry zone, I think somebody suggested that. I mean, this one's doing fine. It's just uh, trucking along, got a dry spot issue there, but I think that's a, uh, irrigation problem I, I worked on the irrigation a whole lot here earlier in the summer and I couldn't find the head over there and the dude I've called hadn't come out yet and that's been a month or so or more anyway pretty good I don't see any real issues so we'll move on to the next one okay most of this fescue holds up pretty good in the heat and this time of year you see something like this and you your thoughts go to some kind of fungus but we can definitely tell that this is a heat and drought stress issue. The See how the grass blade is all needled up like that. There's no lesions in here. The ground is actually a little bit damp under here. But, I mean, we got some burning exposure. Uh, but if you can, I don't know if it shows up that well, but that grass blade is curling right up on itself. It's, it's just, just too hot for it, baby. This right here is some of the tightest mowed turf I maintain. I mean, it's, uh, it's about that tall. I gotta use a special mower for it. Oh, my phone's going out of focus. The Duck Duck Goose 5000. The only drawback is they leave a lot of feathers and turds when they cut the grass. They keep this area back here mowed down to a pudding green, but uh, the rest of the zoysia up there is mowed a little taller. Okay, here's your ad for selling a preventative fungicide. This one <clears throat> I have not got on yet. Well, I, ju I just sprayed it. it, it hasn't been sprayed this year. I mean, you can see a line right there, and this is one that I've been treating. the brown patch and then it just stops right there. Brief, kinda all over the place with the shaky video, but man, I just hadn't had time to really get any good quality video made but there's something pretty valuable in there something i would have liked to have had years ago to show me the differences if you noticed in there i showed you what uh, gray leaf spot looked like as opposed to brown patch and also what dried out turf looks like as opposed to disease damage so if you can cipher those out in there find them and study those images a little bit if you're not familiar with what those things look like there's a there's some perfect examples that's all I got, man. Um, I did some Bermuda work too and filmed some of that, but uh, I'm gonna come back and show some before and afters on some on some of my herbicides I sprayed on those. So that'll probably be coming next week. Why are we skipping it next week? I don't know. But anyway, thank you so much again to uh, Dr. Frazier and Kevin and folks at Pure Seed and the folks at Southern Seed for having us out to that field day. And thank you to Chris Elms for the pictures of the field day. I, I forgot to really take any pictures. So 
Chris sent me those pictures. So you, it's just like you were there. Um, some bad news out of the uh, out of the little powwow there. It's nothing we didn't already know. Um, <clears throat> I guess I can't even get it out. I'm choked up. Uh, seed prices are going to go up this year. Seed availability might possibly be low this year. Yep. Um, anyway, they're, you know, out in Oregon where most of this, Oregon and Washington, where most of the seed comes from, they're having the same issues the rest of the world is having with getting people to work with COVID uh, and certain policies. Nobody wants to come to work. And uh, also they've had a terrible drought out there. So the crop is going to be bad. They're going to probably have some issues getting the crop harvested and processed and it ain't no secret that shipping has gotten ridiculous to impossible. So your shipping costs are gonna go up. So, sorry, fescue's going up. Pass those costs along to your customers. That's why you don't get a customer and give them, say, pay me $50 a month and I'll take care of your yard. I got everything. Cause you never know when you're dealing with commodities like uh, seed and such, fertilizer and such, when the price is gonna go up. Price of fertilizer's up too, by the way. Urea is stupid. Uh, anyway, that's all I got. Sorry for the bad news. Lots of good news in there too. Thanks for watching. Good luck out there.